Welcome to the video where I want to show you the example of related rate problem about the water that is leaking from the tank. So the water is leaking out of the inverted conical tank and if you don't imagine what conical tank, inverted conical tank might look like, I even found a picture for you. So the water is leaking at the constant given rate, 124, uh, 12,400 cubic centimeters per minute. So to make sure we understand this, we have centimeters cubic per minute. That's important to know that all the units match because they will not. You will see in a second. Uh, at the same time that the water is being pumped into the tank at a cons constant rate. So to, to basically people notice that the tank is leaking and they decide to pump the water in at the constant rate. The tank has height 8 meters which is already not matching the units because 8 meters is not in centimeters. So this is going to be 800 centimeters, right? And the diameter at the top is 5.5 meters. Again, doesn't match. That should be 550 five, uh, centimeters, right? Multiply by 100. If the water level is rising at the rate of 21 centimeters per minute, okay, that one matches centimeters per minute. That is is fine. Then the height of the when the height of the water is one meter, one meter again, so it's going to be 100 centimeter here. Find the rate at which water is being pumped into the tank in the cubic centimeters per meter. So finally, they tell us which units they want. But uh, usually we convert everything to the smallest units. That's what I did right now. But in, to be honest, you were supposed to check at the end which units they want us to have the answer. So I want to have a cross section of the situation. Here is my cross section, either the triangle to the left or triangle to the right. Let's use a triangle looking to the right. Here it is, nice looking triangle. Now, this triangle represents a cross section of the uh, inverted conical tank. What we know about it, we know how high it is. It is 800 centimeters high, so this is 800 centimeters. We also know the diameter. The diameter is uh, 550. So the whole thing is 550 wide, but half of it, which is radius, right? And we need half only radius will be 550 by 2 that's 275 like so then we also know that it is filled in with water say something like this and we're gonna call uh, this here so the radius is changing this radius uh, represents the maximum uh, radius 275 but actually when the water is disappearing or increasing because we keep pumping and because it's keep leaking the radius is actually variable here and that's why it's a related rates problem because what do we know is changing here there are two rates the volume is changing and the radius is changing the height of the water so that's what we need to figure out okay let's do it basically we're gonna first start with the building uh, the connections between the given information and uh, we want to first write down what we know and we know the volume let me write down here we know the volume of the inverted conical uh, inverted conical tank or in general cone the volume will be one third pi r squared h that's what we are having here. So that's the given information. Keep it. And we also know that they ask us to find, find this. So I will choose different color to show you. Find the rate at which the water is being pumped into the tank. So we don't know that. But the thing is, we can find it from the volume formula or to be precise, from the derivative of the volume formula. So the volume with respect to time is keep changing right and it's keep increasing and decreasing at the same time decreasing because the tank is leaking and increasing because we keep pouring the water into the tank and both have a constant speed so 
there is a connection we can assume if r is a speed uh, or unknown rate at which the water is being pumped in and the nv is the volume of the water then we keep pumping so you can imagine plus r we keep pumping the water and then we can lose it we keep losing the water with a constant speed here it is per minute one two four zero zero point zero so that's my volume it's keep adding the water and keep losing the water and usually people don't put plus in front you know that so this is going to be a crucial information we're going to use it at the very end when we're gonna find dv over dt from this formula and then we're going to set those two equal to each other and solve for r that's the idea we know how to deal with the problems like this we want to differentiate but it has both r and h and for now we don't know how to differentiate something with two variables height is keep changing and r is keep changing because water is keep going up and going down so that's also a problem right in calculus 3 you will learn how to deal with very with equations with several variables and how to differentiate them for now we need to find the relationship between r and h to substitute one for another one and that's what we're going to be using similar triangles by similar triangles we're going to look at the triangle and we're going to see that r if if being divided by 275 so let's look here carefully r is being divided by let's put it here uh, 275 then h h which is on the left here it is can be divided by 800 800 and that is my relationship between r and h which is i'm going to use to substitute into the volume equation before i can differentiate it choose the one you want to get rid of for example i will solve for r r will be 11 over 32 h just to simplify so then and that is my relationship between r and h plug it into the formula for volume then new formula for volume is going to be one third pi r squared becomes 11 over 32 h squared times h let's simplify this we can multiply everything out 11 squared times 1 is 121 over 30 72 don't touch pi nobody likes to get rid of the pi don't definitely don't simplify it h cube so this is my new formula for the volume function so the volume is a function the volume is changing and height is changing and radius is changing and so on but now i can differentiate it because now i know how to take derivative here using power rules dv over dt is going to be 121 over 30 72 pi now we're going to have times two no, three three goes down let me change the color three h squared is that the end ask yourself no it's not not only v here is um, a related rate but also h so based on chain rule you have to write down the h over dt and that's how you get two related rates they look like so v that's the change of volume water of the volume and change of the height of the water in the tank those are two related rates let me write down for you related rates here and here that's where the title of the chapter comes from now let's simplify and find the finished problem so dv over dt is 121 over 1024 uh, 3 and 3072 can be simplified 
pi h squared dh over dt. But is something given here or not? So I put this in the box. I know many things I put in the box in this problem, but it seems like everything is important here. They told us that there is a constant rate which uh, we know the water level is rising with. So H is my water level, right? And it says that it's rising with 21 centimeters per minute and the units match, so I can just use 21. That means we were giving from the given from the beginning dh over dt. It's always a question. So when you finally got into the moment when you see clearly two related rates, it's always a question which one is given and which one is uh, not given. And that's usually what we ask you to find another one. So dv over dt is not known, but we know dh over dt. And the h over the t is 21. Plug it in, and now we can find dv over dt. So dv over dt is going to be 121, 10, 24, pi h squared times 21. Okay, so we found the speed with which the volume of the water in the tank is changing. It's increasing and decreasing. But this is what we were asked to find. The question in green says, I find the rate at which the water is being pumped into the tank. If we say that R is the speed at which the water is being pumped in the tank, then we found dV over the T. We can set those equal to each other and solve for R. So it's going to be, it's going to be R, and that's the one we're looking for. That's the, the amount of water we're pumping into, into the tank. Minus 1, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0. That's the one we're pumping out. Well, it's leaking, right? So it's not pumping out, but it's a leak. That's why it has a negative sign. Solve for R. This is the equation. Then R is... And you know what's going to happen, 1, 24,00.0 plus 1, 2, 1 divided by 10, 24, pi, 100 squared. Oh, I, I, I forgot to change h, as you can see. Yeah, I just realized it. h should be changed as well because h is given 100 squared, 21. Let me check. Remember, I wrote down this, h was given, and the h should not be plugged too early, we should not plug it over here, because it's h is not a constant, h was also changing. So that's what they told us, when the height is 1 meter, or 100 centimeters. So only at the very end, or maybe over here, I could plug 100, 100 squared, or I could plug here, or to be honest, I could plug at the very, very end, which I did over here. So, this is my answer, which is exact answer, and I personally like exact answers more. But to have some kind of intuition, what is happening, the speed with which we're pumping the water into the tank, knowing that there is a leak, and instead of fixing the leak like normal human being would do, we have the speed of 90,356.9 cubic centimeters per minute, and that is the answer. Hope this example helped you and now you have more understanding how practical those questions are, how practical it is to use derivatives because derivatives basically mean change of stuff. But the most creative thing which I found interesting when I learned all those problems is that everything has its own derivative. Think about uh, it was just inverted conical tank but everything here is changing. The water in the whole tank is keep changing and not necessarily increasing or decreasing. We don't know which speed is faster, or maybe we know, but we need to think about it. The height of the water is keep changing, increasing or decreasing. The radius of the water is keep increasing or decreasing, and so on. And sometimes it's a temperature changing. Sometimes the color of the water is changing. 
and many many more things the wind might be uh, doing something and that's where all those practical problems are coming in and all of these things are derivatives and that's why we are pushing you so hard to know how to differentiate everything you see no matter what function is in front of you you need to know how to differentiate it and how to use the result hope it helped you to understand the problem because it's pretty confusing but i will see you in my next video